The following is brought to you by Cranbrook Television Limited. Welcome to Round Town. 1978 Sam Steele Day is correct. 1980 is a period. Welcome to Rocky Arkin. This is my guest, Roy Orbison. Let me introduce the mayor of Cranbrook and the mayor of Cranbrook. No, we have not had an election that you've missed. We have the mayor of Cranbrook, Kent, England, David Kirby, and of course our mayor of Cranbrook, BC, Rick Jensen. We're here for a cricket match today. Uh, <laughs> mayor Kirby, have you anything to do with what we're standing in right now? One, one of the, or what is happening to us? We, we do find that as soon as people get cricket bats and balls out, it does rain. So it's uh, absolutely perfect weather <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm going to yell, start yelling. The rain is uh, just coming down somewhat easily right now. <laughs> we don't usually get the downpours. Rick, uh, if I can get you just for a moment to give us maybe just some of the history of the relationship with Cranbrook, Cranbrook. Certainly, Jerry. Back since the turn of the century when Colonel Baker arrived and bought his homestead, which is where Cranbrook sits today, he called it Cranbrook in honor of his previous hometown, which was Cranbrook Kent. And that's how we arrived at our name. We've had some nice relationships over the years and some people back and forth uh, visiting you know, uh, Cranbrook Kent. And, of course, as... Uh, Mayor Kirby is with us today from uh, visiting us. So it's it's a nice relationship. I think that's developed, isn't it? For sure, and it's it's certainly a relationship in more than name. There's, there's a bond there that um, that exists because of, of the common background, and it's like a sister city. You, you take an interest and, and uh, develop friendships from it. We have in our council chambers a Cranbrook Kent Town Guide. It's a fairly large, framed... Um, map of Cranbrook Kent that was brought back, I think, in 1979 by Bob Abbey, who was who visited Cranbrook Kent and brought it back. Mayor Kirby, for a moment, paint us a word picture of Cranbrook Kent. Leave out the rain. Well, I must say that I would start by saying that when I went to Fort Steele on uh, on Thursday, I rather thought I was back in in England because we. I, I think to some of your um, residents here would appear to be more like a museum than uh, a, a thriving city. We do cherish our ancient heritage, uh, which goes back nearly a thousand years. So that Cranbrook uh, in England, it has a high street uh, and leading off it uh, a road called Stone Street. So it's an L-shaped uh, town with uh, shops uh, and houses on both sides of the streets, dating back four or five hundred years. And we do uh, make it very difficult for people to come in and wreck the place. Uh, the, the biggest controversy within the town is between those who wish to uh, knock it all down and start again, and those who wouldn't touch anything uh, and, and let the place fall down. So we do have conflict of, of interest. Of course, interesting to note that your history and you're talking historical values of four to five hundred years and more than that where we start talking in in Canada a hundred years 75. 75 years so we're very young in in that respect some of the differences some of the things that maybe have impressed you I know you've only been in the country uh, your first visit to North America is it? certainly uh, we've been here since Thurs uh, since last Monday I and mean, in Cranbrook since Thursday and I think the first thing that does impress uh, a newcomer to Cranbrook is the enthusiasm. Uh, every shop and store you go into, people are enthusiastic to serve you and to do business. And this is something that I think uh, we often lack. People um, feel that uh, the world owes them a living, whereas out here everyone appears to uh, be creating their own um, business. Uh, and this, I think, is good. And it's certainly something I should take back to, uh, to England with me. How about the, the countryside itself? Uh, you're suitably impressed, I hope? Uh, I'm 
Yes, I'm very impressed. Uh, the grandeur of the rock is, has to be seen to be believed. I think it's so different that uh, from England, we have a gentle uh, rolling countryside. We have far more agriculture. Um, every square foot of, uh, of the area is, is farmed. Uh, whereas here, sometimes if you look out of the car, you think you might be going through a desert. Um, I, I just want to stop and start digging and, and growing something. Uh, it seems as though uh, most of the residents haven't got that uh, that feeling that certainly I have. You uh, mentioned earlier that you uh, had a visit to Fort Steele. Did you manage to uh, take in the theatre at all? Yes, I, I was very, very lucky. Your mayor, who's obviously a very generous uh, chap, uh, set me up to uh, uh, dress up in ladies' clothes and, and appear uh, with a rather nice lady. Uh, on the Stella, stage. I believe, is her name, isn't it? And Granny was there, was it? <laughs> yes, they, they were all very nice, and I thought that this is a quaint little custom that, that obviously uh, you get up to in, in, in the Rockies. might be to do with the long winters that you, uh, you have to put up with. Well, we have to be fairly creative as far as our entertainment is concerned in, the, in this particular area, but being part of a clothesline, I would think, would be a first for you, wouldn't it? Yes, uh, very exciting. Very exciting. I, it's sort of... Uh, you could go on from that to, to other and, and even better things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, one has to start somewhere. That's right, yes. <laughs> I was very glad that most of my electorate weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, you're obviously enjoying uh, his worship stay as well. You've been managing to uh, get him and his wife around the area. Uh, you know. Yes, we have, Jerry. We've toured the area and shown him most of the sites of Cranbrook, uh, including the airport and Fort Steele. There was, uh, we had a small reception for him last night, and this evening there will be a reception with the British Army cricket team and Hanbrook cricket team um, for us to celebrate our victory. Well, I was just going to wind up here before we uh, speak with Vic and some of the players, and uh, with any luck, uh, Mother Nature will let us get on with the game. Uh, the outcome, uh, David? Well, as much as we would like to be charitable to our younger um, relations here, I, I think experience on a day like this will count, and I have great uh, admiration for the British Army. So I'm afraid that uh, there might be some humiliation. Oh, goodness. Rick? <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> well, I think he has one do him, does he not? <laughs> yes, and we have got money on it, so uh, it, it could be very exciting. Thank you very much, and uh, we're looking forward to getting you to uh, start the official opening of the game. and. Uh, I don't know, I think Vic or maybe some of the Cranbrook players have something in store for you as well. Not as embarrassing, I can tell you, uh, unless Rick has been involved in the opening ceremony here as uh, what went on at Fort Steele. But uh, continued success in Cranbrook and uh, on the rest of your trip. I understand that you're going to see some more BC and through Victoria. Yes, yes, we hope to travel right across. And um, I hope that it's, well, I'm sure it will all be as exciting as it has been so far. You've got a, you know, a lovely, lovely country. Take back our best wishes, and uh, it'll be up to you whether or not you want to tell your uh, friends back home about Fort Steele or not. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The gentleman primarily responsible for today's activities is Vic Potter of the Cranbrook Cricket Club. And Vic has been instrumental, or I, I should say one of the people instrumental in getting the cricket match underway today. Now we're going to be playing the British Army team yeah. from Medicine Hat. Is that right, Vic? Yeah, that's right. Yes, I thought. Um, you mentioned cricket. I rather think it's going to be water polo. Um, <laughs> well, it could very well be. Uh, are they up on the rules of that one, too? Uh, no, 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 not really. But uh, 
if you want the cricket rules, I've got them here in the little book. So all right, well, we, we may we may need them. Yeah, we, we may need them. Yeah. There may be an argument, you know. Yeah, as to whether uh, uh, rain stops, bad light, and so on. You know, <laughs> all all academic. What what brought the match about, Dick? How did how did it start? Uh, well, uh, as I was saying, that um, uh, even as a boy in Essex, I'd heard of Cranbrook Cricket Club in Kent, which is across the water, uh, across the Thames, and uh, since. Um, you know, Cranbrook to Cranbrook, and I knew that John Baker had come here, and you know, hence Cranbrook was named after his town. I thought, well, you know, cricket's cricket, and there's a great comradeship amongst cricketers. And I knew that, you know, if I were to write them, there'd probably be some response. And this is I did in uh, April, and um, not knowing their address, I wrote to the mayor of Cranbrook, uh, David Kirby, who not only forwarded my letter to them but at the same time gave us his immediate support and said he was coming over here in August. So uh, from there on, with, you know, um, things started to take off. Uh, uh, Mayor Jensen has been absolutely supportive. I can't say enough about the support that this Cranbrook's given to us, you know, yeah. and the British Army appreciates it and so on. Uh, the outcome is that we've, we've got an established link with Cranbrook Kent Cricket Club, um, uh, they hope to be over next year and giving us a game. There you are. Yeah. That would be so, tremendous, would it? It, it huh? would indeed. Yeah. You, you know, and uh, I can just imagine you're going to have all Cranbrook turn out and see this match. I tell you. And we won't have the British Army here. We take care of them ourselves. Eh? <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I was inspired to get hold of the British Army because I had heard that uh, they were down in Medicine Hat. I know it's some distance away, but uh, I just picked up the phone and. Got it from there. They've interrupted, I think, some sort of important things to come up here. So uh, I think that's a good move on their part. Well, we're certainly glad you took that initiative. Uh, you know, what about the weather? Now, you know, we have heard that, you know, the British yeah. play in the rain. and They don't mind to play in the rain. But there's a safety factor, isn't there, Vic? Look at you, yeah. In, in confounded shorts and it's, you know, about two inches of rain out there. <laughs> Mad dog's an Englishman. Uh, but... Uh, uh, no, um, I was saying that there, there is a safety factor that you really can't, is that right? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Um, particularly bad light. Uh, I think I was explaining earlier, and David with me, that uh, uh, one appeals against the light, because with a ball coming down at the rate of it does, you know, uh, it can do, be serious, and therefore, but it depends on who's winning, you see, the losers appeal against the light, and the, uh, and the chaps in the league say, no, the light's all right, and so on like that, so... But the umpires decide. It doesn't, it doesn't ever get the fisty you know. yeah. oh, What about the Cranbrook Cricket Club? It's kind of odd. You've got some good players, haven't you? Uh, we, we want young Canadians, like one sitting in this tent here, to help us keep cricket going, you know, because uh, um, it's a very good sport. It, it's complicated, but not all that much once you know about it, you know. But I think it will grow. As from today, it will start growing, I think. We've, we've got We've got about five Canadians on our side. Um, most of them are just learning the game, but nevertheless they're enthusiastic, and that which counts, you know. And that naturally, strange enough, they've got a natural feel for the game. They've all got good eyes, and they're good on the field, probably because of baseball. I, see. Or, yeah. I say baseball, I call it rounders. Oh, I'm sorry. Call it what you like. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can call it water polo if you like. I mean, yeah, it, that, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. Anybody got web feet? That helps. <laughs> no, we're going to get them though if we stand here much longer. Yeah, that, that's right. I'm just going to say, we were planning a tea break, or we are going to plan a tea break. Yeah, Hopefully, if the weather lets up. Sandwiches. Yeah. But is is that part of the tradition of, of oh, cricket yeah. where you take? Yeah. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Tea and cucumber very, sandwiches. Very very important that is. What is it? Uh, second to the pub afterwards. Oh, okay. thank, goodness. <laughs> thank goodness the pub comes in there somewhere. Huh? That's it. Oh, yeah. And we play cricket on the dark ball, too. There's a game of dark called cricket. So there you are. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Quite a history, cricket, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it, although I say it, uh, the first recorded game was in Guildford, England, which was about 20 miles from me in England, in 1550, there is sort of slight evidence that it goes even back to the Middle Ages. But... Uh, Personally, I wouldn't have liked to play it in that time because can't you imagine that if a if a little sort of surf bowls out the Lord of the Manor, 
he spends two days on the rack. And <laughs> so uh, I, 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 I wouldn't like to play cricket in those days. Well, there, there's some terminology that goes with the game, and obviously uh, we're, we're going to get uh, one of the chaps from the British Army team once we get underway with play-by-play -play to, yeah. to help us understand what's happening out there. But what is this about bowling a maiden over? What? Well, it sounds uh, you know, a little strange to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, uh, if I've, is this five pin or duck pin? Five pin or duck pin when we're bowl the maiden over? Five pin or duck pin? Now, what's that? Well, that's a bowling term, you see. Now, how long have yeah, you been yeah. in Canada? Oh, you're talking uh? skittles, aren't you now? Well, <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Right, you see, now we're, we're coming across a language barrier. When did here? I lose control no. of this here? Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> no, but I really want to find out what you do when you bowl a maiden over. Well, uh, an over consists of six balls, that's bowling six balls, to the batsman, you see. And uh, if, if the bowler has no score, uh, or, or the batsman doesn't score any runs from him, that's a maiden over. And it's the credit of the bowler that it, it's a good thing to do. I mean, oh, it's, it, oh, it's a good thing to do. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, okay. Because you're pinning the batsman down. I to make sure uh, and, of that. Yeah, that's right. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, you're keeping their scores down. So, uh, as long as you start, you keep bowling maiden overs, of course, their score keeps down and down. So, but it's not something we can get arrested for. No, 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 okay. no. Uh, I haven't tried it the other way. Uh, I'm just thinking of that one. <laughs> All right, I'm sure we'll have a lot more terminology coming up that we'll, that we'll have to explain. Well, indeed, uh, uh, particularly the runs, you know, to, you, you know, to the runs and nothing to do with fe beaver fever, you know, and nothing like that is uh, just a unit of a score. Yeah. Short legs and long legs, is there? Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right, and hairy legs. Look. And hairy legs. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be some game. <laughs> well, anyway, you can be you can be assured there will be 22 chaps on those on that field and two umpires, and every one of them will be a damn good sportsman, and yeah. that's cricket. Yeah, okay. the, sport, the sportsmanship, yeah. and they're, and they're supposed to be relatively gentle. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 On the playing field. Yes. Look out in the pub. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the rules change in the pub. That, that, oh yes, that's right. The rules even changed last night when we were at the reception. There were two uh, army cricket chaps there, and uh, they were giving us a bit of knock, you know. But we gave it back to them, you know. We, they were giving you a bit of what? Well, knock. You know, knock. They were knocking at us, you know. Getting at us, if you like. Well, the bowl know. over maiden, probably, was it? Oh. Uh, <laughs> or a short leg or something, huh? He's getting over to me now. I, I, I can't cope with this. I can't cope with this. <laughs> well, we, we'll, uh, we'll get control of this whole thing pretty soon. Sounds like the rain is letting up somewhat, and uh, maybe we can get out on the playing field and uh, have a look at this game of cricket. On board the bus of the British Army cricket team. And we are in the bus uh, for obvious reasons as the rain is still coming down and uh, playing havoc with the match itself per se. But we are going to get started uh, very shortly, we hope. We've, uh, I, I don't know, fellas, where to start here. Uh, Medicine Hat, you are uh, from England, yeah. are you? Okay. Uh, you are a British, uh, a real British cricket team, are you not? In theory, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're British, okay, I've got that one right. And we're turning out to play cricket, but one or two haven't played before today, but that doesn't really matter, it's the fun of it that counts. I understand cricket is a is a gentleman's game, is that right? Well, of course, as long as there's beer afterwards. I, that's one part of the social uh, activity of cricket that uh, is well liked by the British, I understand. Well, I think you can see from the weather outside that it's typically British weather, and we can only hope that strawberry and cream will come later as well. All right, what's this idea of a, of a tea where you break for tea? Is, is that for real? Of course. You do your 20 overs, as we'll probably do today, have tea, and then go out and do the other 20 overs. Now, we talked about uh, earlier uh, with some of the people about bowling a maiden over. Uh, is that legal? In Canada, I mean, you'd probably get arrested for it, we mentioned, but I guess no, it's... I understand, but if the, both options are there, we'll try to help out and accommodate. But as far as cricket's concerned, bowling a maiden over is basically bowling six balls and then not uh, uh, the batsman not scoring any runs at all within that over. Okay. What position do you play? Uh, inside centre. <laughs> <laughs> you have batsmen and fielders and I'm a batsman as every one of us will bat today so it's uh, just a matter of just throwing us on the field and we'll just take our turn. 
All right. What's this about a, a, a short third man? Where's the short third man? Well, I'm Is surprised it? you haven't mentioned Silly Midoff, if you're well, right. Well, that's on my list. Yeah, I want to get to that. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, all right. Then let's do Silly Midoff. Well, Silly Midoff is rather a silly position, and that's why it's called Silly Midoff. But it's fairly close to the batsman, so if he hits it correctly, he's going to hurt hurts the mid-off, so he's rather silly standing there. Wait, wait a minute, he's going to hit, he's going to hurt what? The mid-off? The, the fielder standing mid-off. Oh, okay. Right. You see, you can be off and on, and you can be in and out. It's very simple. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Quite simple. I mean, you know, once you understand what's happening. For a clearer picture, I really do suggest you chat to some of the chaps here. You know, we've got a couple of internationals. There's uh, Jeremy there. Okay. An international representative from right. Scotland. International, is he? Yeah. So uh, he's played the game before. You could say that, yeah. All right, let's go back and talk to Jeremy. Where's Jeremy? Hands up, Jeremy. Where are you? Yeah. Okay. As you see, I've got my one international cap here. Let's, uh, let's have a look at that. Yeah. Now, what, what does that represent? That represents the, uh, the, the international between Northamptonshire and, uh, and the rest of the East Midlands. Now, that's serious cricket. That is very serious, yeah. You could get hurt in that game. Yes, and in fact, I did, yeah. You didn't get hurt in the mid-off somewhere, did you? I got, uh, yes, in the very much in the mid-off, and that's why oh I wear, wear the, uh, <laughs> the box nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch the terminology here, I'm sure, but the people in Canada will understand that uh, these terms certainly can be uh, misleading. Uh, now, you are short third man, are you? No, I'm no? Quite, I've got a long on, I think. <laughs> I'm over six foot, so... Oh, I, I oh okay, yeah. oh, we're, we're, we're talking yeah. height here. <laughs> <laughs> No, long, on is, long on is a position to field in, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah. What's the short third man, then? That will be uh, the chap sitting behind you, I think. Is, uh, is there someone behind me? He's, under, me? he's, under, he's <laughs> underage, so he'll be the short third man. All right. What's, what's, what? <laughs> is he going to bowl the maiden over? <laughs> he may do. I think he's uh, actually the twelfth man, so he won't be playing. <laughs> okay, what's your name? My name's Ryan. Ryan, okay. And uh, what do you expect to do today out there to this Canadian team? They're pretty tough, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, but we'll beat them. You're going to beat them? Yeah. Okay. Any tricks up your sleeves? Anything that we should be aware of that you're going to do? No, not at all. No? We're going to beat them fair and square. You're going to beat them fair and square. Well, I understand it is a, a gentleman's game and there's sportsmanship involved, uh, but some of the terminology we have to get used to. Uh, and your name is? I am Floppy. Yeah. <laughs> you are, are you? Yeah. Oh, you look a little curly to me. I have... <laughs> my name is Keith Hutton. Um, my nickname is Floppy. Your nickname is Floppy? Yeah, I faint. You faint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For what reason? No apparent reason. No apparent reason. No, just do. Oh, just to create some action in the crowd and keep people on their toes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Do you play a position? Um, generally, wherever the captain says I stand, I go and stand there. The and fall over once in a while. Yeah. Or faint. Yeah. Whenever the ball comes to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's part of the strategy. Well, yeah, I puts the batsman off. He watches, you see. I see. That's yeah, quite clever. Yeah, it's a difficult game, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I don't know about this. We're going to uh, be interesting. Okay, I want to find out what. Uh, all right, short leg, long leg, and square leg means. Well, <laughs> square leg, I suppose, is is the guy that stands square to the batsman. Long leg means he stands a long way away, on the leg side. Uh, and what was the other one? Short, short leg. He stands yeah. a short way away on the leg side. That's very simple. Well, it's and then you've got third leg. A third leg is a slightly odd position because it it, it could it, you know it could be anywhere. Yes, <laughs> well, I suppose it depends where the captain says. Oh, I see. The captain yeah, has but, uh, the final say where that yeah. third leg goes. Floppy sometimes plays third leg. Yeah, but he faints not. a lot, so he probably wouldn't be very good at it. Yeah, probably yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, again, the position you play? Well, I don't really play anywhere. I just again, I'm not a specialist. I'm just all rounder. And all play wherever I'm told to play. Okay, yeah. all right. And what do you do in the army? Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just a, a troop leader, Bakshi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just don't really have it. Yeah. Bakshi. Well, that's a sort of a Canadianized Anglo-Saxon term that we uh, maybe recognize here. Okay. All right. A few more terms we really need uh, straightened away here, fellas, before we hit the. Is it the pitch? Is that what it's called? It's not a field, or is it? Field. The field. The field. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to get into this here. Uh, what's a hat trick? That's when you take a wicket with three consecutive balls. You take a what? A wicket, when you get the batsman out. Oh, I see. okay, all right. That's like three strikes, is it? Well, it could yeah. be, yeah. yeah. And after that, but every time you get him out, obviously he doesn't come back in. That's oh. out for good. So it's not that fair game? Well, I mean, if you get him out, you're not going to let him back in? No, you're not. Oh, okay, all right, you play your rules. All right, that's a no ball. Come on, guys. The baller puts his foot over the... Uh, 
crease. From his bowling end. From the bowling, from the bowling end. end where he's running to bowl, you have a crease. And if his foot goes over that, that uh, crease line, it's uh, no faster than a ball. Okay. Now, there's a term here that they're using as well. It's called Chinaman. Who knows about Chinaman? You heard the term? Chinaman. It's a term of ball. It's a what? It's a certain type of ball. A ball? Yeah. That you it's throw? It's a certain delivery. Oh, a delivery. It, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. To draw stumps. <laughs> That's at the end of the game. And what does that mean? Pull the stumps up and retire to the pavilion. Oh, well, that's clear. That's simple. Everyone should be able to understand that. Okay. Um, you fellows, though, take your cricket relatively seriously, don't you? I mean, you know, I mean, we're here for a fun time in Cranbrook today, but yeah. uh, the team itself is, I understand, uh, you play a pretty good game of cricket. Well, what it is at the moment, we've just, we're all out here for um, four months or whatever, so we haven't really bought any cricket kit with us. We haven't exactly come out here just to play cricket, so we don't really... None of us... Well, I haven't played before. He's played um, quite a bit. He plays quite a bit uh, of cricket, so does he. But most of these blokes don't play much cricket at all. Oh, so maybe, maybe, maybe we get a chance to win this, have we? No chance. No, no. no chance. Uh, <laughs> no. We're betting money on this as well. Just, oh, you're betting money, eh? Okay. Just playing baseball, yeah. Uh, all right, well, then we got another game in the pub later that we play as well. That uh, It's strictly a Canadian game, so we'll take it one way or the other, I think, probably. Yeah, yeah. Well. Just huh? ask for, huh? really. You want to see us ask for? Yeah. We're proud of that. Our position is legless. <laughs> Leg <laughs> That's in the bar later. All, the, all the rest are grown ups, so we're, yeah, just, we're, we're the junior ranks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, fellas. Good luck in the game. We'll see you on the field. Right. No, it doesn't want me. Okay, the official opening underway of this match between the British Army team from Medicine Hat and the Cranbrook C Cricket Club. Doing the honors of the opening, are Mayor Rick Jensen, who is going to be the bowler. And there it comes, and Mayor David Kirby of Cranbrook Kent. Not a bad hit at all. I think he's probably, uh, does it look, uh, Kevin, that uh, he may have had a bat in his hand before? Yeah, he said that he's played a few years ago, but I think he's a bit rusty at the moment. <laughs> Okay, basically, uh, we're going to have a match. Um, Kevin Shipton is going to help us out here today. Kevin is uh, with the British Army team. I understand you've uh, had some experience as well in uh, s cricket. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're at school, you get the choice cricket or rugby or football, and I chose cricket because I actually enjoy playing. And when I joined the Army, the chance was there to carry on playing. And when I got posted abroad to Germany, the chance was there to carry on playing. So I've always played cricket, so I've been in the army, and I think it's a very entertaining game. But you're not going to play today? Yes, I am. I'm oh, coming yeah. about number seven, I think. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. We'll be watching for you as well. You're going to help us out and uh, maybe give us some uh, explanation as to really what's happening out here at, yeah, uh, at the same time. I'll give it the best shot. I'll try. Okay. Game is just underway. Kevin, are you going to have to explain what's happening here now? All right. What's happening now? The bowler's coming in, and it's first over, so the batsman's trying to take it very easily, not trying to get himself out. And obviously the bowler's trying to get him out in the first couple of overs to take all the wickets as quick as possible. Yeah. Now, the stumps or the, the wickets, is it a, what, the object of the game? What's the object of the game? Is For the fielding team, is to get the batting side out in as least runs as possible. And obviously for the batting side, to score as many runs as possible in the amount of overs you allowed. Okay. But the bowler is trying to knock the pins down or hit those those pins? Yeah, he's trying to actually break the stumps. Well, you can see the stump is three of them, there's two bales on top of the stump. If he breaks the stumps with the ball, then he's out. He can, the batsman can also be caught and run out and stumped. Okay. Now, when the batsman, unlike Canadian baseball, when the batsman hits the ball, he doesn't necessarily have to run, does he? It's No, he doesn't have to run. He should only run if he thinks there's a possible run that he can get. Otherwise, it's too dangerous, and he can be, he can be run out. Now, uh, how do we tell who's who? Everyone's in white. I mean, <laughs> what team is what? <laughs> well, as you can see, the batsman's obviously wearing the pads and the bats and the gloves, and the scorer, who is obviously taking the marks and the runs and the wickets, will get to recognise something on each batsman so he knows who's scoring all the runs. 
which I find quite difficult, I must admit. <laughs> All right, now what's happening here? They're changing over somewhere. That's the end of the first over, which was a maiden. In other words, there's been no run scored off the over. So now they're going to change round. The field will change, and there'll be a different bowler come in from the opposite end. So this is the opposing team now is going no, to throw? No, it's the same okay. team. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> team, but it's a different bowler from the team. And they all change round. You can see there's, there's a different bowler coming on now. All right, so you keep switching positions and yes, obviously I'll, I'll, you work around. After every over, you always change ends. After every six balls, you always change ends. People have told me that, uh, and we have heard that games can go on for days. At the international level, like test matches, it can go on for five days, which is the longest you can do a five-day test. Which, I mean, I've never actually played in one because I'm not that like standard. But you can watch it on the TV in the UK for five days and it does last up to five days. How do you manage to keep the interest? Well, I suppose it's the same <laughs> as the Canadians watching ice hockey, I suppose. Mean, yeah. If you actually yeah. enjoy the game, you'll sit and watch it. Yeah. What about the referee? What he's, he has his hand out now. What is he, what is he indicating? That, well, he, he's called the umpire, and all he's there solely just is like the judge. He says whether it's, he's out, or it's a no ball, or he's caught behind, or he's been caught in the air. He's like, he's the referee, and he counts the amount of balls you've had in the overs, and he gives signals to the scorer, oh, if it's a four or a six, which I'm sure you'll see eventually when the batsmen start getting themselves in. Now he's gone. He is now out, see? So he, the bowler come in, and he just pitched it up, and if the ball doesn't hit the ground, it can be caught. As you've just seen then, he's out. He's back to the pavilion, as we say. Okay, so uh, he's back on the bus for a while, That's is it, he? Yeah. Huh? His day's finished. He's just travelled seven hours to be out on the second ball. You're kidding. <laughs> We're not kidding I at mean, all. he's not going to play uh, it. That's it. He's, his batting is finished for today. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> well, uh, he's obviously going to be ready for uh, the social afterwards. I reckon he <laughs> might have to buy a crate in the bar later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The, the offensive play there to catch the ball was, was good as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, obviously, it's the bowlers is obviously trying to get him out. and. The captain, the skipper, places the nine men because he's got one bowler, one wicketkeeper, and obviously nine men, and he places them in the best position he thinks possible for catching the ball or for retrieving the ball on the ground and getting it back to the wicketkeeper as soon as possible. So it's quite a good the way I actually place a guy there, and obviously he's taking the wicket. That's the first one to Cranbrook. All right, so Cranbrook is leading. Well, not really. No, you can't tell, <laughs> see, because. It's one wicket for no I, runs. Listen, Kevin, I'm, I'm having difficulty telling you anything here, but... <laughs> yeah, well, I can explain it. It's one wicket for no runs, yeah? And when our side are all out, aye, right, we've lost ten wickets, because obviously you don't lose eleven. The last man, he just walks back when the ninth man's out. And the amount of runs that we've got at the end of our innings could be, I don't know, could be anything from, say, 100 to 150, or it might not be, could be really low. And then... Ah, there you see a wide ball. The umpire just giving a wide ball because, in his view, there was no way the batsman could get across to strike the ball with the bat. I'm sure you have the same in uh, baseball. Was it a ball? You just call it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. or something? Outside yeah. the zone. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, like, when Cranbrook go into bat, if they beat our total, either they get one more run than what we've got, then they obviously the winner. And obviously, if they don't get as many as what we score, then we're the one who victors. May sound complicated, but it's not. The ball itself, that's lead core. That's, uh, that's well, a pretty tough tough ball if you ever get hit. Yeah, you see it. And the ball weighs up to uh, five and three quarter ounces. Yeah, see, the skipper there just scored a six. That means he's hit the ball from the wicket over the boundary without it bouncing, which is six runs in one go, which is quite a good shot. All right, so we would uh, that would almost be uh, comparable to a home run. Yeah, I think so. Maybe, sort of yeah. hit it out of the, out of the pitch or out yeah. of the park. Well, I suppose, yeah, it could be the same. But you get, a, I think you get a lot more sixes than you do home runs, quite honest. Because yeah. a good batsman can stay there all day and obviously score a lot of runs. I just heard the batsman hall or something there. He just yeah. held the other. So yeah, what he did, he realised that there could be, there could not be a run. So he just shouted no, just to reassure his partner that there's no way he's going to set off and try and sneak a run. Now they're changing around again. What's happening here? That's just that's the end of the second over now. Okay. So now they just go back to the original end where they started from, and they'll bowl from that end now. 
with a different bowl of course. Any one position, Kevin, that's more important than another? I know that's difficult, it's a team effort, but mm -hmm. the bowler seems very uh, critical. Right? And the batsman? The fielding is obviously has got to be sharp in the outfield. Obviously you're trying to keep the runners down to the least possible number. But the actual main position on the actual pitch, I think, is a wicketkeeper, who's obviously you get the man there, you can see the yellow bib on wearing the gloves. Because when the batsman doesn't play for the ball or misses it, the ball comes through quick. Mm -hmm. And obviously he's got to be on his toes at all times so the ball doesn't get passed in. Not of a lot of equipment. Uh, fielders don't use any equipment at all? No, none at all. You're not allowed to. Nothing at all. They can't wear gloves or nothing. You can wear a hat, obviously, to keep the sun off the heads, or in this case, the rain. But that is it. They can't use any equipment at all. Except for, obviously, the wicketkeeper is allowed to wear the pads and the gloves. Whoa. That was almost a baseball swing there. Yeah, that, was a wild, that was a wild <laughs> shot. That was a wild <laughs> shot. He won't be pleased with that himself. <laughs> <laughs> so you keep track of everything more or less and then he's doing the same for his side so when our side goes in he'll be taking our batsman and I'll be doing oh, their bowlers who, who caught that I wasn't watching you see that's oh he's got two wickets in that oh now I don't know who the far side, the bed. the bed. Yeah, but I don't know who he is. I know he called me mum, but I, <laughs> that was uh, Bassett, was it? Yep, Bassett called. Zero. Oh, you're tied up in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's really depressing. I now, I've got to, who, who caught that, Pete? Alan. Alan Martindale. Alan? Alan, Alan Martindale. Alan Martindale. Oh, okay. How many did he make? None. Like big, big fat zero. Not first ball, was it? Second. Yeah, it was. Was it? Yeah, first ball. Oh, his first ball. Yeah. And it's double wicket bane at the moment. Yep. So who's doing well? I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they're not doing very well. They're not. I'm afraid they're not. We're not doing too bad. I think getting all these wickets out so fast. <laughs> Give ourselves a pat on the back. You mean this game might end before it gets dark? <laughs> Yeah. Well, we might be into yeah. bat before we know where we are. <laughs> I thought they were going to give us a run for our money. I really did. I was hoping I can see some force. Oh, oh he's got... Oh, <laughs> oh, look, another wicket and that one over. Oh, man, oh, man. Well, it's going well in this book, but it's not going so well in that book over right. there. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean, but they both say the same thing, unfortunately. Well, you never know. T you wait till it no turns. No runs. Got no, no runs. There's a big no fat zero. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, but there, there there must be some strategy on your part here. I mean, obviously. Bowling's, our bowling is good. It's huh? vicious. It is vicious. <laughs> Serious pace bowling. Yeah, so you... We're backing the camera up at least another 20 yards. To take okay. <laughs> Six. The cameraman, that, that was work cut out. Six, yeah. No. Yeah. six for 20, yeah. Yes. Or 20 for six. 20 for six, that sounds better. <laughs> the bus ride, the seven hour bus ride must have something to do with it. Yeah, I think we're huh? quite fatigued. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's their excuse. What our excuse will be, I, I haven't a clue. It's cold and wet. It's cold and wet as well. I see. Okay. <laughs> so of course, you British aren't used to playing in the rain or the wet. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we have a tropical climate where we talk about. I see, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're on the eighth over. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, right. Three now. Uh, he's, he's he got, got, three, he got three wickets. He got three wickets in that one over and it's not over yet. <laughs> now there's a contradiction. What do you mean? You got three wickets in that one over but it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? Well, you, Come you, on. You wanted to know what a maiden over was. Well, this, yes. this is, at the moment, it's going to be a triple, triple wicket maiden. <laughs> a triple wicket maiden. Yeah. Yes, at the right. At the moment. But she's not bowled over yet. No, not, not quite. Huh? She's still standing. Okay. <laughs> Boy, she's a tough lady. Isn't she? <laughs> Her maiden. Oh, oh he nearly got that one, too. <laughs>
Oh, this chap here, he's, he's back at the moment. We'll either hit them all over the place or he'll be out in the next ball. Okay. Now yeah, that is Mr. Chamberlain, right? Yeah. That's the one you. On the scoreboard there, you get that M. Yeah. That's a maiden, which means that the six balls, six bowl, balls ball. that he bowled, <laughs> no runs were scored off those balls. And that's a maiden. Whereas the place, that one where there was one run scored, and that one where there was one run scored, and that one where there were four runs scored. Okay. Oh, he's bowled! <laughs> Oh, beautiful! Oh, wickets! I'm going to get him up, Is that good, eh? For yes, us? it is! It's okay, that's good, good for us. us, is it? Okay. <laughs> All right. Seriously, tragic. <laughs> I think it's tragic. So good for them. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Go to Haddon. Do you know uh -huh. I don't know. Where's the right one with my pencil? No, oh, but. Thanks. There's, there's obviously something not right here, man. I think we better be careful because uh, this is not the same team that I talked to on the bus. <laughs> I mean, these, uh, these chaps on the bus were uh, a little bit stronger as to what was going to happen. But that was, that was before the rain stopped, you see. It makes a big difference. Okay. I mean, the sun's coming out now. And that's that. This is an English game. It's played in the summer, in the rain. And what are you drinking black coffee for? Harold. Thank you. We've got a new bowl of Harold. Harold. Right. Uh, why don't you sharpen it? He's taken my pencil. Well, I think before we uh, end the show, we'll probably have a reasonable understanding of what's happening here. Ho, ho, ho. Well, I hope he doesn't put this. I think we should have that. Come on. Is he out? <laughs> it's a nightmare. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that? <laughs> and that was Kevin. That was Kevin. But that's that was our strategy, man. That was. Huh? Yeah. That's not Kevin's normal way to play the game, though, is it? No. No. Well, well oval ball. <laughs> no. <laughs> we didn't stop on he the way, good, though, he? he does look good. Yeah, he he's, he's, warm. he's got the jump up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice swing to the bat and everything, but... Yeah, he does, yeah. yeah. Really speaking, this is just a temporary, temporary team, this one, for today. Yeah, I see. Okay. Um, no, we can't, yeah. Tomorrow. We've got the main team out, really. Yeah. You see, I'm not playing today, I'm playing tomorrow. You're going to fly the, uh, the heavies in tomorrow? I'm not that big. Huh? <laughs> I will be playing, though. <laughs> We call him Patel. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Gavaskar. Yeah. Imran. Khan. Yeah. So this is going not quite according to plan. No. No. It's a nightmare. Well, yes, it is. Because yeah. we get to the bar quicker. Turn around. Here comes Kevin. Yeah. Turn around. Here comes Kevin. <laughs> we'll just uh, catch Kevin as he uh, comes up here. Uh, I see he's still smiling. <laughs> What's uh, what's all this nightmare stuff? You were telling us to watch you. We watched you, but we didn't have very much of an opportunity to see what you could do. What happened? The bowler moved the ball so far in the air. I just completely missed it, <laughs> just like my mate did. <laughs> well, you see, that's right. We have the field position now with the sun. Or the sun gets in your eyes. That's you see. Right, yeah, but there's no sun, so I can't use an excuse, can I? <laughs> Uh, how can we say it was just uh, camera pressure? That's what it yeah, is. Yeah. I've yeah. never been a film star before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never will be. We've got some runs. Whoops, something's happening. Yeah. Is this good for you fellas now? Oh, it does help. Four uh, more runs, yeah. More cool, runs. we need them. <laughs> oh, well, that's terrible. I've seen baseball scores on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, God. <laughs> yeah, well done, boss. <laughs> oh, that's floppy, yeah. We remember floppy from the bus. Yeah. What does this do? Puts the bowler off. Oh, it puts the bowler off. Yeah. I see. Okay. And what does it do for the batsman? Makes him sick. Makes him <laughs> look like an idiot. <laughs> no, I won't be wearing it when I go out there. It's a bit cold. And they've got one. So you're starting to come on a bit now, yeah, is it? Uh, yeah. Bungalow ball this retains strength. I think the score is lagging behind. <laughs> the run rate's getting so high that it can't keep up. The scoreboard's getting higher. So you're your tips in the team? Tip is, don't be scared of it, because yeah. that's the most. Wait, don't, don't play too early. The ball comes through so I can, slow. I try to defend, yeah. I just can't really defend. That's what I like to say. I mean, you've got so much time. Play. Wait for this play a couple of balls, and if it's on the wicket, just let it, off the wicket, let it go. Mm -hmm. Just watch it. Step onto your back foot. There's another one your boss has got to Yeah, I know. Well, obviously, I've got to let these older men get a few runs, and I? Because, like, five years, they're all retired, aren't they? <laughs> and I'll still be on the scene. 
Grown ups. Grown ups, that's fine. <laughs> What's this going to be? A, a, a souvenir bat? Yes. Cranbrook. Well, David, you explained it to Jerry. Yes. Yeah. What, what's well, happened? What we've done is we've got one that, that we signed last Saturday in, in England with the, the Cranbrook cricket team on. And I brought this empty one so that uh, Cranbrook BC can sign it this week. Oh, tremendous! Idea. And it'll hang back in the uh, pavilion in Cranbrook. Even if we win. Even if we win, you win. <laughs> but we could still win because we've got a very good bowling side, and um, 35 might take a lot of beating. <laughs> but it's uh, it's still there. It's 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 it's, it's open, wide reach. open, wide uh, open, wide open. Yes. Okay. Not in my book, is it? <laughs> 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 a little conflict going here, but again, that's the uh, uh, the, the friendly strategy of uh, of this game, particularly, and the sportsmanship. But again, it really doesn't, you know. I mean, there 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 is a win lose situation, but I mean, I I, I think the the camaraderie that's developed and uh, the friendships that are made it's it's just, is really what the game's about. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. And. Uh, even though chaps feel a bit upset at the time, it's uh, mm. it'll be forgotten by nine o'clock tonight, yeah. or certainly by well. ten, <laughs> depending on how many pints. Yes. <laughs> 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 but the only problem you see that you get here is that the beer is so gassy yes. that you, you can't really drink enough to uh, forget the. A lot of fuel and half a field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the first ball of the second end as we've switched over. All right, Graham. What's happening here now? Let's uh, let's recap the the first portion. Uh, Cranbrook did very well. Yes, we were able to uh, bowl them all out for 37 runs uh, in less than the 25 overs. Now, th our job now is to score 13. All right, 38 more before you run out of your wickets. Is that it? Yes, 25 overs are bowled. Um, He's bowling, and unlike. And uh, anything that's hit behind is live. There's no foul territory. Um, places safe. Before you leave, please subscribe to our channel. It will not only help you stay up to date with our videos, it will also be a nice way to show your support for the volunteers who make this